Hello, and welcome back. In this episode, we're going to take these printouts, you can find a link to the PDF file in the description, and we're going to use these to make some stairs and walkways for the sci-fi tiles. However, before I get started, I do just want to quickly point out that I have labelled all of the pieces on the stairs page, so everything with the number one will make one side of the stairs, and everything with the number two will make the other. And in the first part of this video, I'll be making side one. So with that out of the way, let's make a start. Okay then, first we'll roughly cut out the side piece, and we're going to be sticking that to a piece of foam core. So I'll go ahead and do that now, just using a regular glue stick. Then we'll cut out a piece of the plain texture that's big enough to cover the reverse side, and, uh, and stick that to the back, which should result in the kind of thing that you can see here. And if we then cut that out with a sharp knife, this is the kind of thing that we should be left with. So, nothing too complicated so far. Next, we'll cut out a couple of strips of the plain texture that's the same thickness as the foam core itself, and we'll use that to cover the exposed edges, just like you've seen in some of the other videos. And when we've done that, we should end up with something like this. So, a piece that's textured on all of the sides. Okay then, next we'll glue this texture to some thick card, and as you can see, we'll also glue some more of the plain pattern to the back, so that when we cut it out, we end up with another piece that's textured on both sides. And all we're going to do with this is apply some glue to most of the shaded areas, and stick that to the back of the piece that we just made, in the position that you can see on the screen. So, here's what it looks like from the back, and uh, if I flip it over and lay it on the table, you can see the position a bit better. So, we're looking to have this bolt at the very bottom of the assembly. This support should look as though it lines up and is fixed into place with this bolt, and the whole thing should sit nice and flat. Um, I'm not sure I've explained that very well, but uh, you can hopefully see how it's supposed to look. Anyway, the next thing we're going to do is glue the front of the rail texture to some more thick card, and then we'll need to cut out the outer box that surrounds the whole thing, like you can see me doing here. Next, we'll cut out the back of the rail, again, just the outer box at this stage, and if we apply some glue to the back of that, we can then stick that to the back of the cardboard, which should result in a piece that looks something like this. Then, when we cut the whole thing out, we should end up with this kind of thing. Though, I do want to point out that you'll need to cut out the front side, as that's the side that's the correct size. For example, you might be able to see here that the back is a little bit larger, as it has an extra bleed area all the way around, just in case the two side textures are slightly misaligned. Right then, next we'll glue this kind of grid pattern to a little bit of foam core, and we'll then cut those out. But uh, all they really are, are little quarter inch squares. And all we're going to do with these is wrap the exposed edges in another strip of the plain texture. So, here's one that I've made off camera, just to speed things up a bit, and uh, here's the other three. Now, to glue these into place, I like to use a bit of PVA, and all we'll need to do is put a spot of this glue onto the front or back of one of the tiny foam core pieces, and then stick that to the bottom of one of the kind of upright baluster things, and, uh, and making sure that it's stuck to the back, not the front. And that should end up looking something like you can see here. Then we'll just need to repeat the process for the other three. And with any luck, this is what we should be left with. So, nothing on the front, and these four little spacers on the back. Okay then, so if I bring the first piece back in, um, all we're going to do is apply some more glue to these little spacers, and then glue the rail into place so that each of these little foam core pieces are flush with the top of each step, and also positioned in the middle of each step. So here's how it should look from the side, and if I tilt it towards the camera, you can hopefully see what I mean with regard to having the spacers positioned in the middle of each step. And all we'll need to do then is the exact same thing for side two. 
Okay, for the steps themselves, we'll just need to glue one of these textures to some thick card again. And then it's just a simple matter of cutting it to size. And we'll need to do that for all four steps. So if I bring the sides back in, the, uh, the way I like to assemble them is by squeezing out some hot glue onto the area of the side piece where the step is going to sit, and then simply gluing on one end of the step. So something like that. Then I'll do the same thing on the other side and attach that to the other end of the step. And I am trying to make sure that the whole thing sits flat while I'm doing this and, uh, and that the step itself is pushed up against the two rails. Then, as you can see, it's just a simple matter of gluing on the other three. Though it is worth noting that I'm also making sure that the hazard pattern is positioned at the front of each step. Anyway, when we're done, here's how it should look. So, uh, yeah, there's a set of kind of industrial looking sci-fi stairs. Okay then, for a raised walkway, it's a very similar procedure. So we'll first take this texture and stick that to some foam core and we'll also glue some of the plain metal pattern to the back. Then we'll just need to decide how long we're going to make it and as you can see, I've included guidelines in one inch increments. So in this example, I'll be making one that's four inches long. And again, it's up to you how many legs you want to keep, but uh, I'll just be using the two end ones in this example. So here's the piece that I've made ahead of time, and I, uh, I've also covered the exposed edges just like before. Now, for the extra supports, there's several different ones to choose from, and you can obviously experiment to, uh, to see which ones you like best. But to make things a little bit easier, I've also numbered each piece. So the one numbered four, for example, that will work well with a four inch walkway, like the one I'm making here. And this is made in the exact same way as the piece that we made for the stairs. So we'll just add some glue to the shaded areas again and stick that to the back of the frame. And that should result in something like this. And uh, again, where possible, we're gonna try and make it look as though they're held in place by a few of these bolts. Right then, next we'll need to make the rail which is pretty much the same procedure as the rail for the steps. And uh, as you can see, I've cut mine so that it's four inches long to match the length of the frame. Then it's just a matter of gluing this into place with some more PVA. And, uh, and this time, each of the spacer pieces needs to be positioned on top of where I've drawn a little bolt, if that makes sense. So there you go, that's one side of the walkway done. Um, as I say, it's not much different to the steps really, and uh, we'll obviously need to make two of those. So here's another one that I made earlier. Now for the walkway itself, all we'll need to do is glue this texture to some thick card, and then simply cut that to the desired length. So as you can see, I've gone with a 4x2 piece. Then just like we did with the steps, we'll glue one side into place, and then the other. And there you go, that's pretty much all there is to it for the walkway itself. Now, obviously, you can make these in various sizes, but, uh, but that's the basic procedure. However, before I go, I do just want to quickly show how to make a little corner piece. Okay then, so for this last example, I'm going to make two pieces that look like this, which, once again, have the plain texture on the back, and the same texture wrapped around the outside. So here they are, and uh, as you can see, I've also added a couple of the small supports. Then, just like we did with the walkways, we're going to make two rails, both of which are two inches long. And if you remember the little spacer pieces from the stairs, well, we're going to do a similar thing with this texture, and the only real difference is the fact that this time, it has a texture on the top, like you can see. And in this example, we'll need two of those. Again, with the plain texture wrapped around the edge. And finally, we'll also need to take the kind of cross beam texture, glue that to some thick card, glue the plain pattern to the back, and cut out another two inch length. Now for the assembly, we're going to glue the first rail to one set of legs, just like we did with the regular walkway. So something like this. Next, we're going to glue the second rail to that kind of cross beam piece. So, something like that. 
and then we'll glue the two textured spacers to the other set of legs, like you can see me doing here, which should result in this kind of thing. And we'll then give all of those a few minutes to dry. Okay, so here they are now that they have dried, and I've also cut out another piece of the walkway, but, uh, but this time it's a two inch square. And for the final part of the assembly, we're going to glue the legs to the opposite sides of the floor pattern, just like we did with the regular walkway. However, this time we want to make sure that we do it in such a way as to leave a gap along one of the edges where the floor overhangs the frame. Um, hopefully you can see what I mean in the diagram. Anyway, now that it's done, here's how it looks from above, and here's the underneath. And you can see the empty area on the left. And the reason for this is so that we can then glue the final piece into that gap, so that rather than having a rail on either side, we instead have a rail that goes around a corner. So this is the kind of thing that I'm talking about, though I'm not sure if I've explained that last part very well. Anyway, if I bring in the other pieces, you can start to see the kind of thing that we'll be able to make with these. And I think that's pretty much it for this episode, so here's a picture of them in action. And I, uh, I also want to thank Wargames Atlantic for sending me these miniatures to take a look at, and if you're interested, you can find a full review of these over on the blog. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching as always. Um, feel free to drop a comment below and let me know what you think of these, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye for now.